Hello and welcome everyone. So in today's video I want to answer one of the most common asked questions I get and that is how do I shop for my clothes? How do I shop for all of these vintage pieces, all of these 60s and 70s original items? And so I decided to make this video and just trying to give you a rundown on what I like to do to find these amazing pieces. So for the first part of this video, I'm gonna focus on in-store shopping, shopping in like thrift stores, vintage shops, or antique markets. And then the second part of the video, I'm going to focus more on online thrift shopping, online vintage shopping. So for me, honestly, the two most important things when it comes to shopping for vintage clothing and thrift shopping in general is to be open-minded and have a lot of time. Do not go into a thrift store if you only have like 10 or 15 minutes you want to bring a lot of time and by having a lot of time and bringing a lot of time i mean like one or two or three hours as much time as you probably have because i feel like it is really all about having the time to really dig and sort through the stores having that said i personally actually really prefer thrift stores and like charity shops over vintage stores and more curated antique shops I personally feel like in thrift stores and charity shops things are often a lot more inexpensive and if you're on a budget you can find really amazing things for a really small price there. I've also found incredible things at thrift stores which I'm sure would have been sold for double or triple the price at an antique shop. I personally also really love to dig through all of the things at thrift stores and so for me it's really like treasure hunting. I do like to go to antique stores and like vintage stores as well and sometimes it's really great if you're looking for more curated things but for me personally I just prefer the general thrift shops and charity shops. So what I mean with saying be open-minded when you go to a thrift store is to not go in there and be like okay today I want to find a red skirt because you will probably not find that. And so I feel like it's way easier to go in and just have a general idea of things that you like and then just start looking, start digging. I personally feel like it's also really good if you don't really shop for a season. I don't really shop for summer clothes in the summer or winter clothes in the winter. And I personally never go into a thrift store with like, I wanna buy something today. I don't really have that mindset. I just go in there because I truly believe the pieces that I wanna have will find me in the store. One thing that I really like to do is to just wear headphones, listen to some amazing music, sometimes like podcasts or audiobooks while I go thrift shopping, because I feel like it really gets me in the mood, especially listening to great music. And I often get a lot of anxiety in full shops and like when it's really packed inside a store. So having my own music is just really helping me to focus on myself. My next big tip is to dig through the entire store and not skip racks. I find that the most thrift stores aren't really organized perfectly and sometimes people will pick something up and then just leave it somewhere else and a lot of the times you will find things in like a rack where it wasn't even set that it was going to be. I actually have an example of something that I recently thrifted. It's this gorgeous purple dress that has buttons all the way in the back and the way that I found this it was actually hanging like this in the vest section. So someone thought it was a vest, which you can clearly see by these like little chest seams right here. It's a dress, but someone just put it in the wrong section and I would have never found it if I was only looking in the dress section. My next big tip, and this might be my biggest advice or perhaps my most valuable advice, and that is to be open-minded. And what I mean by that is to kind of try to have the ability of looking at something and imagine it being something else. I know that this sounds a bit abstract, so here's an example. I bought this incredible crocheted leather vest one or two years ago at a vintage shop. It was pretty inexpensive and I love it. However, it is really, really big on me and it's so beautiful that I didn't want it to like destroy it by taking it in or something. And so what I like to do with this is I just button it all the way and I wear it as a dress. I love the look of this as a dress. I think it looks really, really nice. Um, I'm only 5'3", so a lot of things that are tops work as dresses on me. Um, I really like it and if I wouldn't have been that open-minded, I would have probably not gotten it because as a vest, I don't really like it because it's just really big on me. So next up, I quickly want to talk about the whole topic of sizing. So clothing sizes are a mystery to me, I'm gonna be honest. I also struggle with body dysmorphia, so that's a whole new page. But generally speaking, I feel like clothing sizes vary so much from like different brands, different times, especially vintage sizing is often a lot smaller than modern day sizing. And so what I like to do is to kind of have a look at things and even if they don't say they're my size, 
I try them on. For me, it's really all about that. Trying it on, maybe you find out that you need to change a few things, but a lot of things that don't say they're your size will probably end up fitting you because vintage sizing is just all over the place. I also always know my measurements. I bring a measuring tape to the store and I kind of measure things if I don't want to try them on, just to kind of have a general idea on what my size is. Next up, I want to talk a bit about condition. So a lot of the things you will find at thrift stores and charity shops aren't in the best condition. However, it's kind of easy to fix a lot of things. For example, I have this gorgeous dress. Um, I'm gonna talk about why this is here in a second. But generally speaking, this is such a cute dress. I fell in love with it, but part of this was completely ripped off. So like a part of the collar was completely ripped and that's why it was in the five euro bin. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, I can fix that. I'm not a seamstress by any means. I have a sewing machine and I really like to sew. I have never learned it. I had a bit of sewing in school, but generally I just kind of taught myself how to do it. and. A lot of these things are really, really easy to fix. And to be honest with you, a lot of the things that I fix aren't proper fixed. Like someone who's a professional will look at this and think, what the hell has she done to that dress? But honestly, as long as it works for me and as long as you can look at it and it looks nice, I think it's okay. The other thing that I want to show you about this is also kind of going towards the topic of having imagination. This one was a really long dress, so what I like to do is to just shorten a lot of the things that I have. Um, and then with all of the excess fabric, like in this case there was like this whole strap left, I like to turn it into these little like shawl things, you can also tie them up in your hair and they just make for great accessories. A lot of the times if there's like a lot of fabric left, I will also turn them into tops or shorts or pretty much whatever. I just love vintage fabric and I don't want to let anything go to waste. So next up I quickly want to talk about identifying vintage. So a lot of people ask me how do I make sure that something is from the 60s or 70s and a lot of the times it's really hard to pin it down. However, here are some things that might help you figure out what time something is from. And the first thing is to look at the tag. Like this tag, for example, you can really tell that it is a vintage tag. You can also search up the companies, that's what I like to do a lot of the time. Some things also have lot numbers, which are little numbers in the tags, and they were only used prior to 1979, so things with lot numbers are definitely vintage. I got these incredible boots, which from like the shape and everything, you can already tell that they're from the 60s. Um, however, I had a look at the tag, which is also like really typical for the time, and then I searched the company on the internet, and this is actually a German shoe company and they closed down in the 70s. So this is definitely vintage. So that is how I kind of try to navigate my way through all of this. My next big tip would be to study vintage fashion. I feel like if you look at a lot of vintage things, if you look at a lot of the fashion of the 60s and 70s, you can kind of study it and it will get a lot easier for you to go to a store and identify things. And the longer you will kind of work on this, the easier it will get for you to just go inside a store and be like, okay, this is from the 60s, this is from the 70s. When I started dressing vintage years and years ago, it was really hard for me to navigate my way. But now it's kind of pretty easy because I really know what were the trends in the 60s and 70s and so it's a lot lot easier for me now to pinpoint it down. So my biggest tips here would be to check out Pinterest, check out Instagram, follow creators that are really active on there posting about 60s and 70s fashion. I will have my Pinterest linked down below, also my Instagram, I post about 60s and 70s fashion on there pretty much daily. You can also follow my Etsy shop, which is Across the Universe Styling on Instagram. I pretty much post on there daily too, showing you a lot of vintage styles and clothes. I also a lot of the times do like these wear or tear kind of things in the story over there so you can really look at vintage fashion every single day over there. So next up I want to answer a question that I also get quite often and that is why so many of the things that I have don't have tags. Um, this also really helps you navigate your vintage shopping and first of all a lot of the tags are taken out by vintage stores. Why? I have no idea. Maybe it's also taken out by people who owned them before but generally speaking a lot of the things like this dress for example are just hand sewn. You can definitely tell by like the way the stitching goes up here and also the way the kind of lining is put in there. 
it is handmade and handmade dresses are usually the best like I really try to go for them because they're usually made from a really good quality fabric what I also really like about them is that they don't have sizing so for me as said I am extremely short this is a full length floor length dress and it fits me like a dream because someone sew it who was probably short as well and this is also what I want you to focus on when you think about sizing this doesn't have a size or anything it might hang in a certain area of the thrift store if your thrift store is sorted by sizing but just be open-minded about it this one doesn't indicate any size or anything so just be open-minded, try things on and have fun with it. Speaking of trying things on and having fun with it, I feel like being able to imagine what something will look like in an outfit is also really helpful. A lot of the times I will find things where I'm like, mm, this is kind of plain or this kind of looks a bit boring, but trying to imagine how I would style it, like by adding a belt, by adding jewelry, by adding another layer, often helps me to find really cool things that are not as plain as I thought in first place and that are a lot of fun to style 60s and 70s looks with. So as said prior, I would highly, highly recommend you to check out every single section at the store. And what I mean by that is not only women's clothing, men's clothing, but also make sure to check the accessories, check the PJs. I personally love the PJ section. I am a big lover of vintage nightgowns. I have some of my favorites right here. I love to wear them around the house. I wear them outside if it's like really hot in the summer. I think it's great for like a Pamela the Bar kind of groupy late 60s, really incredible look. And most of the nightgowns at the thrift stores are pretty inexpensive. Like most of them are like five euros or probably even less. I get a lot of comments asking about all the tights that I have. I have a lot of vintage tights. I get them all from the thrift store. Most of them are around 50 cents. Most of them are still in their original packaging. As you can see, they have like really cool vintage packaging, of course. Um, this one as well. And especially with tights, don't ever trust the size on that. I have tights ranging from all sizes and they all end up fitting. I feel like with tights they obviously fit your body really nicely and some of them might lose their stretch over time but for me personally shopping vintage tights is incredible. A lot of them are still in their original packaging. Most of them do not lose their stretch so you can still wear them and they're just incredible and most of them are way better quality than the ones that you can get in fast fashion stores. And my last big tip for shopping in store is to not be disappointed if you don't find something. Don't get to the place where you're like, oh, but I want to get something and I couldn't find anything and then you get frustrated. Thrift shopping and charity shop shopping is really all about digging, searching for things and you will not find something every single time you go. You will not find what you're looking for every time you go to a thrift store. But just be open-minded, don't get frustrated, come back another day, another time and just don't give up because I promise it will pay off. So next up, I wanna talk about shopping vintage clothes online. I know that a lot of you kind of more live on the countryside and so you don't really have access to a lot of thrift stores. And I totally get that then online thrift shopping is your only option. And I also know that like some people definitely prefer to going inside a store. I really like to do it if I look for specific things because you can obviously search by name. And I also kind of like to do it because sometimes you will find really great treasures of people who just get rid of like their grand grandma's clothes and they have no idea what the stuff that they have is actually worth so you can get things for pretty inexpensive too. My first tip for online shopping if it is on eBay, on Etsy, on Vinted or Poshmark, Depop, whatever you like to use is to always 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 sort by lowest price to highest price. I personally don't have any problem with digging through eBay for hours. I like to do it, I just listen to music I don't mind putting a lot of time into it. You will find the best deals by doing that and you will probably not overpay it. My next tip would be to know your measurements and know your international sizing. For example, your shoe size, know your European shoe size, your US shoe size, your UK size. Know all of your sizes and measurements because it just makes it a lot easier than always having to look it up. Try to memorize it or just write it down in one place so you really have easy access to it. Next tip is kind of a pro tip but I really want to share it with you and that is to know the words of what you're looking for in different languages and different countries and this kind of goes in with my next tip 
which is to know which country's shipping is really inexpensive. So let me kind of try to give you an example here. I live in Europe. European shipping is pretty inexpensive, especially if it's coming from Eastern Europe. I will just go on any sort of translator and then I'll kind of put in what the 60s mod mini dress translate into Polish or Hungarian or French or Spanish. And then I'll just put that in as well because a lot of the times you will find great things outside of the country and a lot of people don't put their things on eBay in English, but rather their mother tongue. So I feel like that's a great tip to kind of make more things show up on your eBay page than if you just search for the English term. This next tip is all about the places where you can online vintage shop and that is to not sleep on the less cool sides. I feel like a lot of the people who do online thrifting use either Etsy, eBay, Poshmark, Depop or Vinted. But let me tell you, there are a lot more websites where you can actually find great deals. One of the things where I have to tell you I was really hesitant to try but has really grown on me is Facebook Marketplace. I know Facebook Marketplace is associated with a lot of like scam business and a lot of like people trying to sell their cars and stuff. But if you really start looking for things, it is really helpful. I found great vintage clothing on Facebook Marketplace, a lot of them actually in my area. So I was actually able to go there, check the condition, pick it up. That was also great. And then also pages like Craigslist or in Germany, there's like another type of eBay as well, which you can use. And I feel like a lot of countries also have these kind of more local sites where you put something in and then people in your neighborhood can see it or like people in the city where you live. And I feel like you will find incredible things. A lot of the times these are pretty, pretty inexpensive or you can even sometimes just go there and dig through people's wardrobes and find things. And that brings me to my next point and that is estate shopping. I know that estate shopping is really popular in some countries and then I feel like there are countries where it really isn't a thing. But basically estate shopping is if someone passes away or someone leaves their home and sometimes people just leave everything in there. And by everything I mean everything. Like they will have their clothing in there, their furniture, every, every, everything. And you can just go there and dig through things. And I have been to a few estate sales and you can get incredible, incredible clothing. The same goes for garage sales and flea markets. Be open-minded, go there. Even if something isn't advertised as a vintage market, you can find incredible things because people will just bring their old things and a lot of the times people don't really know if their dresses and stuff is from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s or the 90s. I feel like a lot of people who aren't into fashion don't really have an idea of when their stuff is from and so you can really find incredible things for really great deals. So my last tip for online vintage shopping is if you get something that is really expensive, make sure the condition is good. Make sure to look at all of the pictures. Ask the person for more pictures. Just make sure if you're spending like a hundred dollars or even more on a piece of clothing or a pair of shoes, make sure that it is in good condition. Because it happened to me before where you pay a lot of money for something and then it gets shipped to you and it's really, not in the condition you would have wished of and then it might be really disappointing and you kind of feel like you've been played because you spend all of this money on something that you will need to get fixed or that isn't as wearable as you thought. I have one last thing that I want to tell you before I end this video and that is to always trust your guts. For me personally, there has been times where I go into a vintage shop, I find something or a thrift store and I find something I don't get it and I will regret it and I feel like that mostly happens if I don't trust my guts. If I let my self-consciousness or my insecurities take over that is when I will not get something and I will really regret it and same goes for things where I'm kind of like oh this was a big trend in the 70s or the 60s I really need to get this and if I'm being 100% honest with myself I might not even like that trend and so I will not wear it. It will just end up hanging in my closet, which is really sad because someone else would probably really like this piece. 
So my number one tip is to always trust your guts. If you feel like this piece will make you feel good, will add something to your wardrobe, to your day. If you're thinking, if I put this dress on in the morning, it'll make me feel incredible. I will have the best day, get it. This is all I can tell you. Trust your guts, because I feel like deep down, you know what you really like. And last but not least, do not forget the fun. Don't forget to have fun with it. Don't get in there all brainy. Just try to have fun, find things that you like, bring your friends. If you've watched this video and all of this is really overwhelming to you, don't worry, you will get the hang of it. If you still kind of want to go the easy road, you can always buy a bundle from my store. I will do all of this work just for you. You can just go on the Etsy shop, buy a bundle, tell me what you like, and I will go through all of this and find the perfect things for you. So that is linked down below as always. And that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would love you to give it a thumbs up and maybe even share it with a friend. It supports me, it supports the channel and it would mean a lot. Make sure to leave your top thrift store vintage shopping tips down below because maybe you guys have some tips and tricks that I don't know of and you just want to share them with me and the community because I'm sure we can all learn from each other. If you're interested in all things 60s and 70s, like the fashion, the makeup, the people, the music, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I upload multiple videos every single week all about that and I would love to have you around. I hope you have an amazing day. Go out, enjoy the sunshine, take yourself some time to focus on you and your mental health today and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys!